Hello, everybody, and welcome here to this little Shing Chang shindig we like to do that's called Project Athena. And on Project Athena, we like to meet and congregate every Sunday so we can do a little bit of eldritch horrors, we can do a little bit of pulp fiction, we can do a little bit of team building, world saving, and ass kicking. Today, we've got a little bit of the former, a lot of the latter, and a bit of the middle. But before I go on on another rant that involves or needs more coffee in which to articulate, we're going to jump around to our cast. We are minus one. Elijah Sawyer today. His strider is traveling. So uh, we will get our silver-tongued con man back next week uh, just in time for something. And that something is, I'm not sure if anybody in chat was around about five minutes ago, but Lord Conti has donated to introduce a horror of his own creation straight from the Frankenstonian lab of Lord Conti. Anybody that's also a fan of Project Kronos knows that when you need an eldritch horror, Lord Conti is going to come up with one that's, it's, yeah, it's horrific. And this one, this one is as well. Uh, we will get into that. We're going to save a little bit of that for our silver tongue devil, but we've got a lot more in the form of psychological and actual horror to get into with the four that you see in front of you. So without further ado, let's go around and talk to all of these wonderful Olympians. We're going to start at the top on the other side. Steven, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. I am uh, psyched for this episode. Uh, I play Dwight Burke. He is a sniper. Uh, and uh, let's, let's get it on. Uh, like a sniper. Sees the target, takes out the target, moves on to the next one. Like it, love it, want some more of it. As we drop down to the, the coolest cucumber on the Olympians, Allison, how are you doing? And is Kate ready to negotiate and calmly discuss everything that's going to happen in the next two hours? 
Hey everybody, it's Allison. I play Caitlin Jane O'Callaghan, aviatrix extraordinaire, princess of the skies, America's flying sweetheart. And I want to take just a second, Greg, because I've been watching a few of your streams this week and I, I, I just need to mention something. The word magnanimous has nothing to do with vengeance or horror or terror or pain. Uh, mm -hmm. Quoting here, generous with forgiveness, free from petty resentfulness or vindictiveness, high-minded, noble. Uh, so just wanted to make that point. You've been missing the mark just a touch there, but hopefully you can kind of come back around. That, that'd be great. Um, I heard everything that you said. I drank it in. I believe I'm still magnanimous. And we'll move on to Lindy. Lindy, how are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm doing super spiffy, Greg. I am, uh, I'm totally ready for tonight's episode of Hulk Cthulhu. I am very ready. Greta, however, I do not think is ready at all whatsoever. She's had a rough, a rough past day or two of it. She's- Rough go of it, yep. She's not, She's not doing so hot right now, but we're gonna we're gonna fix all that. We're gonna have like some tea in a castle, and it's gonna be really calm, and everyone's gonna be happy, and there's gonna be rainbows, and everything's gonna be great. So I'm super excited and looking forward to this session. Good, good yeah. excitement, optimism. I'm a magnanimous keeper. All of those things that we had discussed, a little bit of what Allison said, a lot of what I believe it truly to mean. Um, which is, is, is vengeance uh, bordering on uh, blood wrath. But uh, we will go up now to Lauren. Lauren, how are you tonight? Oh, I'm peachy, Greg. Peachy. Good. Um, yep. I always forget what I'm going to say because as soon as you say my name, I get angry. But I'm going to use that anger. <laughs> I'm going to use it to get through this session. Hi. I'm Lauren, I'm that Salty Ginger over on Twitter, and tonight I am playing Sabella Ives, and that's about as much as I know about her right now. Good start. Good start. Here we go. There we go. So before we get into tonight's episode, uh, we need to go back and tell you how we get to the beginning of tonight's episode. Um, as Lord Conti has displayed, if you would like to put your own stamp into the story of the Olympians of Project Athena. Please look down below and you'll see our donation table. You may help, you may hurt, you may add to the story, and whatever you do decide to do, I can pretty much tell you it will come into play, and if this is a tale written between two covers, then one of those sentences, or as how many as you would like it to be, will be yours and yours alone, as we are all Olympians and we are all content creators for Project Athena. But, without further ado, this is music is too happy. There we go. A little bit more ominous as we bring it down. And as we, we bring it down here, uh, I'd like to welcome you all to our, our mid-season premiere. Uh, this is actually the third season of Project Athena, but if you're just jumping in, the story, it sells itself, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Episode 8, Sandcastle. So... To recap this, we just left our Olympians. Uh, they were in an alternate parallel world where they had to make a decision between happiness or pain. Now, a couple notes. In this new world, Greta could not remember the death of her beloved, of her Hans. And in not remembering, she elected to return to this real world. Our own sniper, Dwight Burke, could remember what had happened and he still elected to return to the real world now loved ones were left behind including one phil castillo and during the moments in this perfect world this elysium that the olympians were experiencing ruby foster appeared to elijah sabella dwight and phil and told them that none of what they were experiencing was real the, the beautiful mountaintop in West Virginia, the Thanksgiving dinner, the perpetual or the, the, the feeling of hope that existed, not just within each Olympian, but within the world entire, as it was later explained to them that this world in which they had been gifted 
by the powers that be was a world parallel to our own, a one where the human race was poised to achieve greatness, to achieve peace, to achieve technological advancements. Um, but that was another world. Before disappearing, Ruby Foster and her companion Bailey, as they told them that none of this was real, none of these people were real, Bailey screamed out that Phil Castillo was Bailey real. Bailey or, or, or Bali? You no, know, it's Bailey right now. Oh. So as the group escaped Elysium with their loved ones, they, the group escaped Elysium as their loved ones bought time with one Lancaster, the hunter extraordinaire who had chased them through Borneo, following them perhaps to the ends of every earth. And as he gave them the decision, happiness or pain, stay here with perfection or go back to a world where they could be beaten, where they were on the cusp of being overthrown, the Olympians elected to return. And in so doing, they rushed through a purple portal to the sounds of death as their loved ones bought them time, Lancaster promising to not only kill them, but torture them, and as is the want of a hunter one, consume them. And as they walked through the portal, they arrived not into a parallel world, but one that they could tell immediately was their own. They were high in the mountains between Germany and Switzerland, and before them, about two miles off, was a castle, but not just a castle. This was a fortress. This was a sancta sanctorum, and without knowing who owned such a sancta sanctorum, they knew it was Joseph Dietrich. But worse yet, the only Olympian native to this land, Dr. Greta von Krauss, the one that couldn't remember while in the perfect world, now can. And she remembers Hans. She remembers losing him. She remembers having him but moments before and voluntarily giving him up again. So here on this bare gravel road leading to a castle of someone that has proven to be at the very least a thorn in the Olympian side, we arrive and drill back down into the story that is Project Athena. And as we spin around our Olympians here, we need to reorient ourselves as we're coming back from a two-episode arc. So please, Olympians, tell me, how are you feeling? What do you look like? And what do you think about what you see? Steven. Now, I can rem Dwight can remember everything from, has he lived like two lives? Like almost like a Star Trek thing where he's, how far can he back remember, you know, because he's lived past. He he can, uh, Abigail, see, he remembers Abigail's birth. He remembers, you know, uh, everything. up until the moments, yep. So it seems like it's been 40 years that he's been here before, I, you know, I mean, I don't know time how time exactly goes well but. as as time would go it's a it's a juxtaposition of time fuckery as kiana would call it <laughs> and this is something that seems both immediate that you just left this space you just left the battle in the museum um and also something that occurred long ago it's that weirdness that you get when you cast a memory back to your childhood that seems so vivid and you think my word that had to have been yesterday. And then you think of the day after that happened and you think, my word, that was a lifetime ago. Very similar. There is recall. There is emotional distance and time seep of the knowledge. But as far as the experience in a kind of a chronological way, it's odd. Uh, Dwight would probably, Dwight is in, a, I guess, a chef's, a chef's outfit. I think that's what we suited him in. Some some uh, fat guy's outfit, you know, and he, he kind of just like drops to his legs and he just immediately vomits. Like, you know, like, it's like, you know, it's bile. There's nothing, they haven't eaten. So he's just like, he's basically dry heaving. 
I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. And I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna, and he's talking about uh, Lancaster. I'm gonna. Uh, he doesn't care if it's a dream or not. He's like, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. And he kind of just like, you know, he's still, you know, as he jumped through the portal, he lost eight sanity. So he's fucking just like puking and he's spit snot and whatever. It's just coming out of his face. And he's just trying to gather himself as best he can. He's like, oh my, you know, he's, ah, I'm gonna fucking kill him. So it is safe to say that this is probably the most unhinged we've seen Dwight Burke. By far. In- in the tale so far. Yep. So the stoic sniper has deservedly broken at the remembrances of a life never lived. Cato Callahan, how are you? Well, like Dwight, Kate remembers everything. Uh, she's suffered a similar sanity loss uh, mechanically. And so she's bringing back with her not only memories of the last few hours, but memories of a life very, very different from the one that she's led in this world. Particularly, she remembers uh, not only falling in love uh, with with Evie Reardon, who was uh, a friend of hers growing up, but she remembers feeling that love returned uh, and reciprocated, and that's something she's never felt uh, in in this real world before. Um, and so, as she steps through, and she steps through with Sabella, they were the last two through, uh, and, and she had her by the hand. Um, she's shaking physically, Uh, uh, her hands shake, her knees wobble. She cannot get out of her mind uh, the the look on Evie's face uh, when she looked at her the very last time. Uh, And she knows of of everyone who was there uh, that, uh, that Evie has the, the the least chance, perhaps, of of uh, of surviving, and so she's uh, struggling to catch her breath. She's shaking. She's wearing uh, the uniform of a Nazi Luftwaffe officer, um, which is what she was wearing before all of this took place, and. Um, Uh, and feeling a little dizzy, just kind of looking around, trying to orient herself, and then suddenly realizing where they probably are and deflating in a way that maybe nobody's ever seen America's flying sweetheart fall. Sabella. Uh, As soon as Sabella and Kate are through, Sabella separates herself from Katie. Uh, She's looking at something on her hand and she kind of shrugs off the, she's wearing a similar uniform to Kate's, kind of shrugs off the top of it. And it looks like she is looking at a smudge mark on her glove intently. But of course it is not a smudge mark. It's a scorch mark in the shape of a finger. And she's just staring at it perfectly still, not crying anymore. But if anybody was good at picking up emotions, it's white hot fury. And she pulls her eyes up, looks around at the rest of them, doesn't say anything to anyone, looks at the fortress ahead and starts walking. Greta. Uh, did Elijah come through the portal with us? I know he's not here tonight. I just want to know. He's yeah. Elijah's okay. there, but um, 
uh, regardless of how or what order you entered into the portal, you all arrived simultaneously in a okay. straight line. So if you went through, uh, Sabella and Kate went through, they'd be t- closest together, but you're mm-hmm. all kind of in a line facing the uh, castle. Well, Greta and Elijah went through holding hands, um, and Greta is currently wearing maybe a couple scraps of really scorched remnants of the dress she was wearing because she fought a flame cloak lady and a tank exploded like 10 feet away from her and she's covered in just third degree burns cut like she's got a couple bullet wounds and she kind of just stands there for like as I can shock for a moment and then she just grab like wraps her arms around Sawyer and just starts sobbing She's just probably the most emotion you've ever seen from Greta. She's just sobbing. But to be specific, this is crying or weeping because of physical pain? Um, or... Probably not. She's dealt with a lot of physical pain before. This is emotional pain. Uh, like, if you looked in her eyes, her, her like you would see she's sorrowful and guilty feeling okay so olympians as you are standing there recently returned to the world that you call home the castle in front of you is a good two miles off um the snow as it is dropping dances in the crisp frigid air but does not lay in any measurable amount it uh it just traces flowing here and there like ghosts on a west virginia mountaintop Two miles off, the sun is going down. What would you like to do? I'll use my free action to continue crying. Granted. <laughs> uh, Sabella is walking. And uh, Kate uh, kind of jogs to catch up. Uh, as she does, she's drawing. Uh, her 45, um, not saying anything, uh, but moving in to lead the group. Okay, so Kate's taking point. Uh, we're gonna say that for the sake of uh, god moding or Jaegering uh, Elijah, he will continue to assist Greta towards the castle. Um, it is extremely cold, you guys have the clothes on your back and your packs with we your... do <laughs> you guys have the clo- if you're wearing clothes you have them on your backs um i'll I was give going to say... I'll, i left behind the jacket that i was wearing if someone puts that on you I'm sawyer probably would yeah yeah he probably has a lot more wits about him right now than greta does mm-hmm. so she's got like two that. emotions going on at once when she hardly ever has one it's a lot so you can have that Dwight kind of, he's still on his knees. He, he, he must have bitten through his tongue because he's got blood coming. He kind of spits out the blood and he fucking dusts himself off. Where the fuck are we now? Like he's completely clueless of where they're at. He sees a castle. He can probably figure it out after about a minute. Okay. Well, we're back to fucking hell. We're on the border between Switzerland and Germany, Mr. Burke. Well, unless you want to freeze to death, I suggest you start moving. Let me guess, this is fucking Dietrich's castle. Good guess. Still walking. You're getting out of earshot of Dwight, if he is still standing. Yeah, he's still standing there. He's kind of collecting himself. Kate turns around uh, and back toward Dwight. Get the muzzle of that grease gun up, Mr. Burke. I need you up here. Let's go. What does he have on him? Is is all the guns functioning seems to him? He would definitely check them out. Yeah, you still have your pack that you brought into the museum with you. So as you went through the portal there, you are rewarded with that equipment when you returned to this world. So yeah, that duffel that you had packed 
with all the guns is still at your side. All right, he checks the grand, and he, he does a he does a look ahead, spot hidden up the road. Sure. Yeah. Uh, anybody wishing to do so, the only person I'm not going to allow to do this is Greta, because the narrative dictates she's being carried and covered. So anybody that would like to roll a spot hidden, you are able to, or any roll you would like, you can. Oops. Excuse me. You can do so now. Success. How much of a success do you get there, Mr. Berg? That's pretty good. Um, as you're walking, you guys get about a half a mile ahead up this gravel road that doesn't seem to have a tremendous amount of traffic print on it. Um, and from one of the towers in the castle, you see a light wink and flash in a sequence. Ed. Hmm. I failed the spot hidden, so I'm not seeing it. What do I see? A light? You see a light in the tower. Um, Dwight would be able to recognize this from his time in the military as most likely being a light that is manually shuttered and unshuttered, so it can create that almost immediate opacity and uh, potential uh, signal. It looks like something like that. Yeah, then. He kind of, he kind of, you know, he kind of looks at Kate, like cross-eyed, like, well, there's a signal up there, Callahan. He's not happy with her right now, but he, he pushes that aside. I, uh, look up, um, Morse code, perhaps? Doesn't appear to be. It just, it's just a signal to, this is where you come, basically, right? In his uh, eyes. It's it's a signal of some kind, but if there is a pattern to it that you know the cipher for, you're not you're not catching it. It's not Morse code. Um, right. It's not any of the naval ship to ship communications that you would be used to. That's kind of a shorthand for it. Um, you're not sure. Sabella's so never stopped walking. And that means, Sabella, you're most likely at least 50 yards ahead of everybody else as you're continuing on this path. Um, I, I go ahead. probably would not have let her get that far ahead. How I, are you going to stop me? I'm going to jog, that's how. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that. Uh, I yeah. You stopped to talk to Dwight, Kate. I called over my shoulder, <laughs> Sabella. <laughs> um, but... Assuming we're, we're close enough, um, Kate uh, looks over toward Sibella and says, you suppose he's expecting us, Bill? I'd assume so. Um, I want to check as I'm walking, Greg, because I still have not stopped walking. Um, the puzzle box, if it says anything different, Um, it does not. However, when you look at it, there is, as we mentioned back in New York, when it was starting to whirl, um, there is where the smooth wood existed before in the banding, there is a piece of it that seems raised by about an eighth or a quarter of an inch. It's right around where would be the, if you're looking at it lidwise to open, it would be the left hand side. Hmm. So we got to go deal with this fucking asshole again, huh? Apparently we do. Yeah, Dwight's kind of like, whatever. Well, unless you want to attend to Dr. Von Krause's wounds here. That's what I thought. Roll a spot hidden for me, Sabella. Yeesh. Ooh, hard success. Yay. I oh, quoted yay. Bob Dylan in an earlier show, and I will return to that same quote. Two riders are approaching. On horses? Began to howl. Yep. <laughs> Great. Great. 
um, from the direction that we're going? Yep, they are. Uh, it looks as if they have either passed the side and are traveling towards you from the direction of the castle or have come from the castle. Okay. I wave. Um, they pull up about 20 yards away from you. Um, one of them returns the wave and they seem to be waiting there. Can I make out any details about what they look like? Not from this distance. They seem to be covered because of the cold. Smart. They can do, I however, also see this to... now? Yeah, you can see them. They do, however, seem to be roughly the same height in saddle. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> as, they, walking. as they've come up, I'm, I would have leveled my, uh, my 45 at them. Yeah, yards but, away. But, but, but again, as long as Sabelle is walking, I'm keeping pace. How many um, yards away are they, Jeej? Uh, 20 from Sabella, so whatever your distance is between Sabella... Oh, well, that's, that's easy for me to see with the Grand. I mean, he'll, he'll peg the head if they do anything. They're sitting... They're armed. They, they have rifles over their shoulders. They are slung, though. And they seem to just be sitting there as you get closer. Uh, in what order are you approaching? I'm assuming Sabella has not been caught up to, and everybody else is... Uh, drawing down on the two riders with the exception of Greta who's being borne by a skirted Elijah Sawyer I, I, I'm still moving so I'm close behind Sabella but probably a little behind okay Dwight's full stop okay uh, Dwight you would know that this time right now is the uh least effective for a sniper as there is a transition in the sky that's casting odd light um it's not a problem for you it's just you know one of those things that in your already pissed off and emotionally compromised uh state you just you know it's one of those well of course it's right now um he's trained on the horse okay uh sabella as you get closer one of the figures with an open hand reaches up and pulls down a scarf that's around their mouth or face and pulls back a hood um and yeah it's Dietrich but it is not a Dietrich that you've ever seen before as this Dietrich appears to have at least shoulder length hair and a very thick maybe three to four inch long beard as he's staring and looking and his eyes go to Sabella they light across Kate for a second they mark the position of Dwight and they see maybe for the first time after this threat assessment Elijah bearing a heavily wounded figure do you need assistance? hi Joseph yes we do we have some injuries. Put on the horse. Mr. Sawyer, can you bring Dr. Von Krauss up here, please? Yeah, Elijah will come up. There's you, there, insert snarky comment, and then Elijah comes forward. <laughs> Great. Uh, are you giving Greta to... Joseph on the horseback? Uh, Is this Sabella's yeah. call? <laughs> Sabella told Elijah to come up and he came up. He did? I don't Absolutely know if anybody did. else wants to say anything, they're welcome to. He reaches down to pull Greta up into the saddle. Yeah, Greta's burnt. Greta's pretty cathartic right now, so she's just gonna gonna kind of like like she's I think the tears have stopped and she she's just super out of it and she's kind of just gonna go along with whatever is going on. 
that that's what I was looking for. I, this wasn't meant to be a power struggle thing. I wanted to know yeah, if Greta no, was going no, along Greta, with it Greta as you were just, offering she's, Greta she's to Joseph too out Dietrich. Of it to make any like okay. Greta has five Dietrichs behind her right now, so that's probably a pretty good <laughs> guess. Okay. <laughs> So um, no, she's just she's just cathartic. She's like there's literally no more liquid to come out of her eyes because it's all come out from the burns and it's just she's just gonna go with whatever. Mr. Sawyer, you should stay with her as much as you can. I don't know if, how good you are at running in heels. Uh, the other uh, horse moves a bit as the rider turns around, pulls off a uh, uh, sort of like a fedora type of hat and revealing another Joseph Dietrich. This one's similar to the ones that you're used to in that he's clean shaven, but he too has longer hair that's pushed behind his uh, ears, um, probably coming down to only the top of his neck, but it is still an odd occurrence to see this when you guys are used to the high and tight look of Aryan Joseph Dietrich. Um, and he offers his hand down to Elijah as they turn and begin to move back and the longer haired joseph of the one that first revealed him revealed himself with the beard he and at this point the only person i believe that can understand this would be sabella with her ring he turns to the other dietrich and says she does not look good i'm going to ride ahead and everyone can understand the responses. Yeah, yeah. So you see him begin to move at a pace that uh, as fast as his horse can bear the both of them. Great. Elijah is also taken off at a quick clip. Um, the second Dietrich, the one that's clean shaven, turns back around and just says, To the castle! we'll let you in and he rides off leaving the Dunk. three of you Dunk. Uh. all right is this what... <laughs> yeah oh callahan is this what we want to do i mean they're they're taking her so i guess we have to now right this would be your time to ditch Elijah and Greta if you want to. Like, mm. perfect, they're gone. We can go to our this own would thing be, now. This would be the time. Uh, uh, Kate looks at you over her shoulder, but doesn't say anything. And she's uh, still carrying the 45 at this point, but it just sort of like she's forgotten that it's in her hand uh, and, and is walking. Uh, continuing to sort of try to stay abreast to, uh, with Sabella toward the castle. The only other thing that Sabella's doing is taking off the scorched glove and shoving it in her bag. So she has uh, one gloved hand, one ungloved hand? Mm hmm. She just doesn't want to look at that one anymore. Okay. Um, you guys can quickly get to the front of the castle. It is not moated or anything like that. It appears that maybe in ancient times there was a drop path around it. And as it is set high in a mountain, it looks as if the path that you're currently walking was added maybe after such dark age times. And um, you're able to walk literally up to the large 10, 15 foot wooden doors that are in the front of this place. Who's not what a surprise, motherfuckers in a, sh in a goddamn castle. Mm-hmm. Are the doors closed? They're closed against the cold. You have not checked to see if they are locked. A moment passes, and then the door opens, and you see another Joseph Dietrich as he is standing there. They're all the same age that you have seen so far, despite having various lengths of hair or beard growth or states of dress. This one, though, however, is wearing a stethoscope around his neck as he looks out and says, we are taking your friends up to the hospital on the top floor. Um, does anyone else require anything? Any? Uh... He's trying to like look at everyone to see if they're wounded in any way. Are you kidding me? 
No, I think he is being very earnest in his offer. Am I still burned from the other world? No. No injuries from there carried over. I think all three of us are fine. We just like to be there to make sure Dr. Von Krauss is taken care of. She's upstairs. You can follow me. Thank and he you. opens the door wide. Walk in, walk in, walk in, walk in. Okay, Sabella's in. Dwight and Kate. Yep. Following. I'll let you know. Just like, why is Sabella so eager to get in this place? I mean, he just cannot get over that. Why is she so eager? That's in his head. He will, but he will go. Okay. Um, when you walk into Castle Dietrich, the first thing that hits you is the smell. It smells of wood and tobacco with slight hints of lavender and pine. There are high-backed leather chairs uh, decorating much of the space as they are cordoned off in pairs or sets of three in small alcoves as you walk into this grand hallway. Um, Almost as if there are cubbies or reading nooks that are set up. And as you guys go through here, you realize that each set of these chairs or these stations possess a large bookcase, some of them built into the stone of the castle, some of them separate pieces of furniture that have been added to the area. It could be two low-lying bookcases or one vast large bookcase, but it seems that that is the reoccurring theme of these little pods that you experience when you walk in. In addition to that, there are large area rugs everywhere. Uh, Some of them Persian in design, some of them European in that they hold uh, coats of arms and things probably meant for walls instead of floors. But here in a castle high in the mountains, it's best to have the floor insulated and save the walls for things that can be sealed with modern amenities. in addition to all of that, there are Dietrichs everywhere. And for those of you that are watching that are saying, wait, how the hell are there so many of these guys? Uh, Joseph Dietrich is a Nazi that the group has met that seems to possess the ability to multiply himself. Still a Nazi? When met, he was a Nazi. He seems to be able to multiply himself. And this multiplication seems to have occurred not at birth or not at some type of specific age or inherent power, but from something that he procured in the city of Jerusalem back in 1918. He walked in one man, he walked out legion. But here in the Alps, there's something else going on because to this point, the Dietrichs that had been encountered by our Olympians were all Nazis wearing their uniforms cut the same way, looking the same way. Uh, They were almost perfect copies of one another. They did did meet an older man, presumably the original Joseph Dietrich, that seemed to have aged into his 50s, but the majority of these clones looked the same until now. As you look around, it seems that each of them bear some type of identity that extends beyond any type of desire to camouflage their number. It looks as if this is something that is wanted by the individual Dietrichs that are walking around. There are Dietrichs dressed as hunters, men wearing suits. Um, Several of them are sitting in these pods, reading books from the bookcases. They look up when you pass, many of them noting recognition as they see the others note and know who you are but quickly return to their book and their eyes do not linger um if you roll me spot hiddens for the three that are going through here i will give you a little bit more but there's a lot to take in and some things may be missed Uh, extreme okay with an extreme roll uh dwight as you're walking through you notice that 
and it helps with your sniper eyes and it's not necessarily something that requires research or study and it takes you a moment but it seems that each little bookcase each little section of two to three chairs the tomes on the bookcase are all of the same subject some of them written in languages you do not understand uh, some filtered spanish that you do uh, some english that you surely recognize when you're walking through each of these areas with their different subjects make themselves known to you just as if you had opened one of the books yourself. One of them seems to bear the subject of telekinesis. One, the history of the African continent. Another, Alexander the Great. Another, voodoo. And the last that you're able to recognize, the social customs of India. Do I think they're studying them? Like they're plotting, planning? In my eyes, are they very intent on what they're doing? They seem to be reading, yes. Um, whether or not they're intently reading, uh, there are implements around them where notes are being taken from certain tomes. It looks as if there's cross-referencing going on with that extreme role where you can see multiple copies and tomes open in sections as they seem to be going back and forth kind of checking to make sure facts are right in one tome with another. A lot of um, theories. That it looks like there's a, a lot of, at the very least, enrichment going on here in Castle Dietrich. Okay. Um, he won't say anything. He just, like, like it's a glance and then nothing happened. Um, the one that lets you in is, one with the stethoscope, is indicating that you all to follow him up this kind of side stairwell that you're probably it's more custom to being or probably was used originally for servants and as you kind of go through this is almost too narrow definitely for two people to walk across going or uh, ascending the staircase but it's enough to kind of peel through as you spiral up to the next floor and when he pops out um, there is a wide open ward type of area that is cordoned off with what looks to be very recent additions to um, separate this larger space into several rooms where you see that lumber has been hammered and tied into the stone itself, where there are curtains draped across. Um, you do see that there are beds in this ward. Uh, some of the curtains are open. You see that there is a Joseph Dietrich sitting in one of the beds. Um, he's bare chested but he has a uh, sling as another Dietrich is tending to his left shoulder which appears to be heavily bruised um, but when he takes you in the the stethoscope Dietrich moves ahead and rushes into the area and you see that Greta is on a a rudimentary gurney this isn't a metal gurney this is one of the old wooden ones that does not collapse it does have wheels on it it is not very mobile but they seem to be pulling her more of a lift than an actual roll into one of the further or the farther kind of cubbies or rooms that they had uh, uh, erected or constructed and as soon as he runs up he starts saying we need to get her warm these, these wounds should be bleeding heavily but they are they are not with your permission um, and he turns around and looks as if He's getting ready to treat Greta, but he needs someone to give him the go-ahead. Okay. <laughs> of course, whatever it takes. He rolls off and disappears with Greta. Uh, a few of the other Dietrich step forward. Each of them seem to be wearing or holding things that would look like they're part of the hospital staff here and they are each indicating a separate station for the remaining three of you um elijah is being looked at in a station down below the, the curtains are open it's you're not being taken out of eyesight of one another more like out of earshot of one another as it looks like they're examining elijah to make sure he's okay and you know, there's a lot of burn marks and soot that needs to be identified of whether or not it's a wound or superficial. As soon as it becomes clear to me that they're asking us to do that to whichever one is closest. Hey, where's, where's, where's your boss? The old one. 
Uh, but, um, he's. We're all the same. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Where's Where's the one we <laughs> talked to before we went to Berlin? God, y'all confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> ah, um, the father is coming. We called for him. It's a fucking nightmare, is what it is. When will he be here? He's coming as quickly as he can. That doesn't answer my question. When will he be here? He should be here by morning. Well, that seems pretty efficient. Good to know. Kate casts Sabella a quick look that she can't quite hide, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, the white would do the same thing. But then back. So what are we supposed to do until then? You can, you look, no offense, but you, you look awful. We can help you. We can give you a change of clothing. Um, as soon as that hits, Kate, the, the 45, which she's never let go of, is right up at his head and she's taking steps toward him. You have no fucking idea how awful I am, son. I meant no offense, by it. And you can just see her hands shake. Her, she's visibly. The one with the stethoscope, one of many. He looks, has his hands up, makes no threatening moves, but he cocks his eye over to the corner. Kate will and, die here. And he says, Joseph, perhaps Miss O'Callaghan would like a drink. And there is a longer haired Dietrich in the corner who is wearing like a, a, a tweed sport coat. And he pushes himself up out of a chair and kind of saunters over to the group. A drink, Miss O'Callaghan? You know, for someone who's supposed to be so smart, I don't drink, Mr. Dietrich. I would, however, like to get out of this goddamn uniform. You have clothing. And I didn't mean anything alcoholic. You could have tea, um, coffee, this. At this, she lowers the 45. She walks to the closest one of those little uh, sort of curtained off areas and she pulls the curtain shut. I would apologize for us, but, you know, say that this is because we've just gone through something rather traumatic, but I think we're always like this. Whiskey. Do you have whiskey? As whiskey is being yelled, the one with the stethoscope looks at Sabella and goes, it, we would expect the files were very detailed that we would have been provided, but yes, it's... We are, it's fine. We appreciate, appreciate your apology. It's unnecessary. Uh, yeah, whiskey, and he indicates. And over in the corner, there's a Dietrich with a shaved head who uh, lowers the weapon that he had pointed at all of you and uh, reaches to a small table behind him and produces a bottle and several glasses that he's holding between his thumb, forefinger, and middle finger. And he clink, clinks down. Clink, 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 clink. You have cigarettes. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out some German smokes. <clears throat> Whatever. Dwight sits down and he begins to consume. Okay. So, uh, over having a drink is Dwight in the area uh, cordoned off um, by her own volition is Kate. Sabella, what are you doing? Hmm. Everyone seems better. I don't know. So, um, 
Is there one of those nooks nearby? Yeah, there's several of them that are open. Um, there's three or four of these Dietrichs that are standing around kind of waiting to see who might require attention. Uh, they're... I mean, you guys look like shit. I mean, you're covered yeah. in ash. You're covered in uh, pieces of museum, pieces of each other. Um, they're, you know, wondering why not all of you are in the same shape as Greta, but they're patiently waiting to see if their services are going to be required. But yeah, there are plenty empty ones of these little kind of curtained areas around. Do you have a shower? <sighs> uh and one of them laughs and the other kind of nudges him. And, yes, of course, we have showering facilities. Um, I, I can take you. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he leans over and says something in German to the one that giggled. And of course, Sabella, you can hear this. He says, listen up, you giggling shit. Go down and tell everyone to get out of the showers. We're sending someone down in there. Tell them to hurry. I know that Joseph just got in there from work. Just tell him to get out. And the, he, this guy runs off in the direction that the other one uh, ushers you. Uh, yes, this way, Miss Ives, we will, we, will, we will prepare the showers for you. Hotel Dietrich. Great. Yep. That's where I'm going to go. Okay. So we're going to cut back to Greta as everyone is now, uh, the party is officially split. And um, let's go into Greta as, Greta, you're starting to come to. How much you want to come to is your agency as Greta is both physically and mentally blasted. Um, the original stethoscoped Joseph has donned a white jacket, not for the purposes of looking dashing or looking like a doctor, but because he is, it seems that the pockets of this coat have numerous things that he is using right now as he's quickly moving around and gently uh, shouting out orders in German um, to apply certain pressures and certain things. Be careful of this burn, the flesh here, and as he's kind of examining the entirety of Greta's body and for a moment and whether Greta is aware of this or not his fingers linger for a moment over the original um, wound on your left arm that was part of the explosion in the lab and it takes a moment you think for him to realize this is not part of it but it's something that happened a while ago and he says in German to his assistants, just just watch this. Just I don't think this is recent, but watch this. And he begins to... I think to... She's, she's loopy, but at this point, she's uh, come to just enough to kind of backseat doctor. Okay. Because she totally would. Right, right. So um, he begins by asking for, uh, your you're going to be the worst patient here, I can tell. But what hurts the most? I want to say my heart, but that's not what Greta would say. Uh, that's what she thinks. She thinks it for a second. Um, she <laughs> See, well, most of the burns are probably third degree, so that means the nerve endings are shot. So she'd probably uh, say the bullet wounds. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I think the bullet's still in there. <laughs> Um, they begin to go about the process of making sure that these wounds aren't going to become septic as far as the gunshots and being beginning to treat certain measures of the burns that are across your body. And mm -hmm. I'd like you to roll a spot hidden here as you're close enough not to have to do this with disadvantage, Greta, as okay. uh, you're inside this little area with. Sure. Spot hidden. God, I'm, I'm too out of it. <laughs> Um, you notice that there is not enough to identify it, but you notice that there are several odd looking vials that are on the nearby hmm. table. Um, okay. They seem to be arranged and you see that there are several syringes of different gauges that are being either in the process of filled or um, they're just kind of waiting for the order in which to do so. 
Mm -hmm. Um, as this is all happening, um, he's looking. Well, those, those tweezers, not the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're going to be, you're going to be all right, doctor. It's you're going to be fine. Did, but it is customary. Who are you uh, the closest with in this group? And we will, uh, you keep them close. Uh, Elias Moya. That's uh, the the gentleman in the. Uh, the dress. Yeah. 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 Um. Yes, he's here. We'll keep him. We'll keep him up here. He's the closest one to you, then. All right. Um. And we're gonna cut over to. No, 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 Dwight. no, no there. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna cut over to Dwight as the. Uh, Shaved head Dietrich is standing there and he's just staring at you as the two of you are sipping whiskey. He hasn't said a word. And when his smoke burns down and he's unable to hold it anymore, he just drops it to the ground and a little pile of collected a pyramid of ash and burnt paper. It's off to the side. So uh, what is your, what's your story? You're a soldier, right? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I'm a soldier. Oh, all right. Do you want to sit here and just get drunk? Is that what you're going to do? I yes. can get another bottle. He What's your story? Finger. What's your story, Bald Dietrich? <laughs> uh, I too am a soldier. Really? Mm, yeah. And kind of Dwight sits back. Where did you fight? Oh, all over. Well, tell me about it. I tell you what, soldier. You tell me about your most recent time you fired your weapon, and I will tell you about mine. My most recent fire, I was firing Germans. Aha! Me Kraut. Too. Me too. You too. Really? Where at? Mm, are you familiar with the little town by the name of Munich. Yes. Of course I know where Munich is. Ah, that is where I shot two Germans. Why did you shoot them? Because they were in my way. Now why did you shoot Germans? And he pours himself a little bit more of the whiskey. Because that's my job. That's my purpose in life. Is to shoot purpose. Germans. You take no pleasure in this? In doing your job? Or is you, are you simply a tool? I used to think I was a tool. Now I just know that I'm a, I'm a waste. We've wasted everything. What have you wasted? Ammunition, soldier? You do not <laughs> waste it if you are putting it into the enemy. I just go along, let's picture a song. Dietrich, Bald Dietrich. That's what I'm gonna call you is Bald Dietrich. That's your song. In the notes, they just, they just go along. That note gets hit. That note gets hit. That's what I am. I hit the notes, the song wind. That's where I, I, I see myself anymore. Cause I, I, I don't know, I don't understand the song anymore. I don't understand you. I don't understand him. I don't understand that guy. So I just go along with it. And when the song ends, it'll end. You have a lot more information than I understand. I am an open book. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But I do have a question. If you are a musician and not a soldier. Are you playing your own instrument or are you being conducted? <laughs> That's a good question. I saw I'm so. definitely not I'm definitely not playing my instrument. I probably have never been played my own instrument. I've been conducted from here to there to there. But you know That's what? Bald Dietrich. Yes, soldier. 
at the end of the day. We'll see how it ends. Uh, it's the thing about day is they come and they go and sunrises and sunsets and you shoot people and such is the life of a soldier. Pardon me, a musician. But um, you say that you're being conducted from here to there. And are you... Do you feel like you're in control, soldier? <laughs> or are you just along for the ride? It apparently feels like I'm along for the ride. Does that make you happy or sad? Hmm. Happy, sad. Hmm. That doesn't matter. Doesn't sure matter does. anymore. If you're happy, you're a musician. If you're sad, you're a soldier. Yeah. So it kind of gets back to that. We'll find out. There's no happiness. There's no sadness. For survival. Ah. Then you are neither a musician nor a soldier. You are a winner. And let's cut over to Kate O'Callaghan. Kate, you are in one of these areas by yourself. There is a bed, a small table. Um, various medical supplies as far as bandages. There's a kind of a, a, um, a bottle of iodine and um, uh, just alcohol, the, what they call the, 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 the table uh, medicines that are always sort of left out. Um, it's about three, four, five minutes later when since it's impossible to knock on a curtain, you actually hear knock, knock, knock. I'm just finishing um, getting out of the Nazi uniform and back into the flight suit. Um, and so I just turn to face whatever direction in the curtain that's coming from and pull it open. Ah, ah, ah he's the Dietrich in front of you is wearing a like a buttoned up shirt with a tie. Um, he's got a vest over top of it and he's holding what looks like towels and a large jacket, like a large kind of a, like a fur collared jacket, um, various other items of clothing. Uh, he seems to have behind him what looks to be like a, almost like a little trundle of, uh, footwear as he's looking and looks to the, the, the footwear, looks to what's in his arms and says, we were unsure what you would need, so I brought most of it. Kate starts walking forward back into the center of the room. She'll brush right into him if he doesn't step out of the way. He'll, yeah, he'll step out, but probably a beat too late. So you're going to kind of clip him a bit. Ah, Shoulder oh. check him a bit. All right. This is how, okay, this is we will do this. All right. Um, Where, where's the kitchen, Joe? Ah, uh, Z, it's downstairs. Uh, you, you want to take me there? Uh, that's not, yes, I will do it. I'm the clothing person, but I can take you to the kitchen. That's. You know, I, yeah. I, I kind of like you, Joe. I, I, I like you like this. It's all right. Um, I, tell you I, what, I, you, I, let, let's go. You lead the way. Sure, absolutely. Um, do you need any of this? The, the, the clothes, uh, boots. Uh... She's she's fully clothed in the the clothes that she came through into Berlin in. Okay. Um, I'll I'll just leave it here. Someone will get it in a bit. If yeah, and he puts it down on the bed. Uh, just right this way, and he kind of leads you down into an opposite spiral staircase. You're about three steps down when you can smell the smells of uh like um not to be stereotypical but this is you're feeding mass quantities of people there's definitely like a sauerkraut smell coming out of this area and uh it, you know there's a smell of cooking potatoes and things of that nature definitely some meats involved um 
when you guys get about three steps down he turns and kind of looks back up the spiral at Kate and says food yes uh, do, do you want me to bring any of your friends with, with you uh, anyone in particular no I don't think so this is fine for now oh perfect and you guys get down into the kitchen and um, he yells something in German and the five or six Dietrichs that are seated at these eight or nine picnic table like long tables as one some of them have just sat down they kind of look and mm, get up and take their plates and leave the the cafeteria area we were told to um, give you all your space that was probably smart and Kate moves toward the nearest refrigerator or pantry yeah there's an ice cabinet yeah I'll open that up filled with what you would expect of a cold larder it's got like hanging links of uh, the cold kept uh, sausages there's certain things in here that look to be probably vegetables that they're keeping chilled more of a cold cellar type of uh, thing there are no heads. Uh, there's no body parts. <laughs> um, it certainly looks like a kitchen. Uh, Joe, grab was, me a plate, would you? Yeah, I, I am the clothing. But yes, the plates are here. And he pulls one down. They said that you would maybe shoot some of us. That was a concern that many of uh, uh, the, the, the bold gentleman upstairs, he was pretty sure you were going to kill one of us, but... I'm sort of hoping that you don't, since I'm the closest. As all of this is happening, Kate is just piling food onto a plate. Oh, she doesn't. She doesn't turn around to look. Uh, says, "No, I don't. I don't think I'm going to shoot any of you. I might blow the castle up before we're done, but it's it's a it's been a long day." Uh, yeah. Yeah. At that point, she turns around with a plate piled with food. She says, uh, now, Joe, tell you what, I'm going to sit here and have my dinner, and then I'm going to find a place to get some rest. I have a place. I'm not, I'm not the room guy, but I'm the clo- I, know where, I know where they are. I know where they're going to put you all. Well, why don't you just give me some directions and then go on, get out of here and, and have somebody call me when daddy gets home, would you please? We're not allowed to... You understand, we... I, I'm the closing guy, but I need to... One of us has to be here. It's close. Just, I can go in the corner, but I have to see you. That'd be a real good idea. The corner, I mean. Yeah. I, I was, won't say a word. Kate sits down at the nearest table and starts to make a sandwich. Okay. I'll just be over here. If you need me, I just... I might stir the crowd a bit just so it doesn't cook to the sides. They're telling me to do that. Like he's I'm, not even there. Okay. She just completely ignores him like he's not even there. He goes over and starts basically in this large pot that is containing, you know, a uh, steaming kraut. He's keeping it from burning into the sides of the pot as he's... She kind of kind of looks up a little bit. Uh, and at, at, when, when she sees that he's really focused on that sauerkraut she takes her 45 out and then holds it up and just <laughs> slams it down on the table next to her and goes back to eating did I do something wrong again completely ignoring him I can get you anything that you want if you're upset silence I know it's good but uh, I don't think that you need silence Mr. Dietrich your gun. 
Yes. You, you can get me anything that I want? Joseph. Yes. I don't think you can. I can try. And she won't respond to him again unless there's something weird happens here. back to stern let's cut to sabella as she gets to the shower uh the showers um as you're getting there a couple wet hair dietrichs are coming out one of them is the dietrich with the long beard that and long hair that had picked up greta on the horse and as he comes out his hair is wet and lying against his chest his beard on his chest as well as he looks and you know nods and presents the shower facilities of Castle Dietrich to Sabella um the area is yours and the Dietrich that brought you down here uh, is there anything that we can get you um I can find it I, it's not something uh just tell me it. If I don't know what it is, I will ask. Great. I'm not a clothing guy. Well, that is unfortunate. Although I'm not in the same state as anyone else. Well, maybe you could find the clothing guy. I, unfortunately, he's getting your uh, Kato Callahan some uh, things to wear. I can, I can redirect him. It's not a problem. Great. What do you need? Clothes. Just broad clothes, like you want. He he's, you know, indicates what he has on. Uh, uh, just utilitarian. Do you want something stylish? I don't. I'm not a clothing guy, but I can give adjectives. <laughs> Which guy are you? Me. Yes. I'm. I'm the poet. You write poetry. No, no. I wish uh, I read it. It's a lot of answers your, in poetry. What's your favorite? Uh, uh, so very difficult to pick favorites of uh, the poets, but uh, I believe for to the age that we are in right now, it, it's, it's, I believe that Yeats says it's best. What rough beast slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. It's how I come round at last. Ah, but... We know. Study. That's all I do. Ah, what do you do? Uh, they told me to read your files, but... I did not. Well, that seems remiss. I am not the Olympian guy. There's one guy, okay. There's actually three, but we call him. <laughs> it gets confusing around here, especially when you like go to put on laundry. Very difficult around here. But... Sure, that does sound tough. Yeah. So what is it that you do? He's bringing your clothes. <laughs> oh, great. I used to own a bookstore. What was your favorite? <laughs> Through the looking glass. Ah. It's a children's book. It's wonderful. I, I, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, it's an interesting choice because if I were the psychological guy, I would think, is she trying to, to trick me or something of that nature? But I don't think that you are. I think it's, it's your favorite. Tricks are like lies, and I can't stand lies. I don't like them either. What, 
if you mind me asking, why aren't you at your bookstore now? <laughs> oh boy. I know that you're all... I'm not... I sit around the table and... I mean, I haven't completely... I know you're the Olympians. It's uh, uh, Dr. Greta von Kraus. She is with you and uh, we all know about her. And we know that uh, one of you is psychic. I, that's you. <laughs> yeah, um, it's that's a good guess. It, yeah. Um, it, it's in the aviatrix and uh, we told us... She was probably going to kill one of us. That's why I made sure that I stay close to you, because I didn't want to be the guy that got shot. Um, and then, of course, the soldier. They said he could shoot one of us. Uh, it, I, I took my chances, so. Well, you probably lucked out. I am not going to shoot you. Mm, I don't think that you are any less deadly than the ones with the guns. But, uh, You're correct. Why do you trust the father? Why would you come in here? If you mind me asking. Mm-hmm. Well. I always thought that there was something wrong with me and that that's why I couldn't have a normal laugh in my little bookstore and that's why people were afraid of me because there was something wrong with me but now do you know what I think now I think there might be something wrong with everybody else I can give you 200 examples. Really? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. Situation is awful. I am not the occult guy. I am not the military guy. I am not the spy guy. But from what I read and what they have sent me to do, it's an awful time to be anyone, poet or bookstore owner, a clone or a psychic. I guess. This is going to sound crazy. But you didn't really answer the question about uh, why you trusted the fathers that come in here. I'm not going to press the issue, but um, you and your friends could stay here. They will never come here. And if they do, they will they will rule the day. Well, we have plenty of books. I know there are a lot of books. I use, I think even up to a few, I don't know how long we've been here, an hour ago, I just really wanted to help. It's noble. It was. What and do now. What do now? Hmm. I think I want to make the people that have done this to us suffer he leans which forward. is it he gets pretty close do you allow him to lean in as if he's going to mm-hmm. he whispers into your ear make people as when you say make people pay for it he says caduceus use their name we all do I want them to suffer as much as they've made me suffer and the others. That is what we are working on. I'm not the caduceus guy, but I know that. Well, 
why I trust him. That's what I think he wants to do. And y'all, he, whatever, are the closest things to me. You think like that. And I would just love some proof that someone who is like me isn't a complete monster. But I don't even know that I'm not, that I won't be. Hey. Stay here. Take off your glove. And he points to the one that you still have on. And he turns around disappears for about a minute and comes running back in and he's <sighs> I'm not the running guy um, <laughs> and he produces a book and it seems to be a not necessarily since the collections were not yet out um, this is the latest collection of William Butler Yeats and he gives it to you, and before it touches your hand, he says, They can't get close enough here. I take it. Your powers are right back on. <sighs> <clears throat> What you do see, though, is with this onrush of the powers that come in, you see this Dietrich as he is sitting in one of the numerous high-backed chairs that are in the area and reading from the very book that you have. And as if from your own eyes are the eyes of this Dietrich, um, you see as he places a mark in the book to denote his place, it is no ordinary bookmark. It is your picture as he slides it between the pages and closes it, and you come back out. But before we continue with that, let's go over to Greta as... Greta, you are being uh, looked at and serviced by multiple Dietrichs, <laughs> and... Um, you notice that they are filling up these syringes and they begin to kind of lean towards the, the heavy areas of blistered flesh or, or deadened flesh that was hit by these third degree burns by both the cape and the explosion. Mm -hmm. And um, a, as they get close, the main one, stethoscope Dietrich with the white coat, says, um, this is, uh, will help. Uh, there's no, uh, no drugs, nothing that will. Uh... What is in it? What is it? Ah, it's uh, it's a recipe that uh, we made when we got a hold of some of yours. Uh, we couldn't make yours; yours are fantastic. But um, we got pretty close with some of these, uh, especially with uh, wounds. Um, it's, it's cellular augmentation, um, regenerative, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we, we stick you with it and uh, it grows tissue. <laughs> Rumor has it you have interesting names for all of yours. I am not the interesting name guy. Okay, I've, I wish to see this uh, it's a recipe when, we, when I am. Uh, he indicates not that. He indicates a, a section over there, and there seems to be piled clothing, uh -huh. and there are an array of bottles on top of it, and uh, he pulls something out of his pocket, and it says, property of Dr. Greta von Kraus, and he puts it on top of the clothing and the vials. I've already taken care of it, so you'll be able to see everything. We have a laboratory here. When you're up on your feet, I will take you, I'll show you everything. You must, I show you mine, you show me yours. Uh, she's kind of, kind of like, like, like a shadow passes over her face when he says laboratory. Like it's, it's excitement, and then there's like a look of almost dread, and then it kind of, she shakes it off. Yeah, that that would be very good. I. Mm. 
need access to a lab. My serums are almost out. Roll a psychology check for me, please. Okay. Psychology, psychology or psychoanalysis? Uh, whichever one that you've got. <laughs> oh, Tell shit. Me. Tell me um, When you're sitting there, even in your wounded state, as soon as you your face kind of falls with the mention of the laboratory, you mm-hmm. see his face cloud for a moment, and then you see a, a note of realization cut across his face as he says, oh, ah, Hans. I'm sorry. It's uh, and she's gonna start like tears kind of welling up a little bit again. No, no. I... It's... He waves out the other three Dietrichs that are in the room, and um, he begins to administer the shots that they were going to give. He continues with what they were doing. You are, you are hero to many of us, as you uh, created these things and. Um, we have heard of your exploits here in, in Germany, and I have so callously said what I did. Um, I've killed him twice. And I didn't uh, even realize what I was doing the second time. I, I, at this point, he's looking around, wishing that the psychologist guy was here. <laughs> Also, you begin to feel much better, Greta, as you oh, receive good. ten. Hit, you receive ten hit points immediately oh, from what they're doing to you. Good. Um, he pulls a little a over stool. half now. <laughs> he pulls his stool up as he says, "We just need to just let it, let your body accept it, and make sure there's no reactions. So that you should be fine." But um, yes, it should not occur every hour. It is a typical procedure. I will not leave your side. I will stay here. Um, me and my foot that I am pulling from my mouth. Um, I will uh, stay here. Um, good. I don't wish to be alone right now. Since I have in for penny, in for pound, um, can you... Now I can see. I know. They told us to study up on them. I, I'm not the American guy, but you know, they I sit so beside him. So, so strange. They make no sense. He makes awful food. He's trying to make us all. It's the worst. It's the worst food. It's disgusting. It's, it's I mean, it's it's Hamburg. It, I've been to Hamburg. So there's a food that tastes nothing like that. It smells alive. It smells like it's still alive in the barnyard. How are we supposed to eat this? I say to him, but he is, of course, the one I have to share room with up here. Oh. So I'm in here with the American guy. It's, it's better than the French guy. He's across the hall. Ooh, but I uh, that is debatable. Yes, well, um, you know, I'm very sorry for what I said. Um, it's just been a long day. Do you... Is there anything I can get you? Um, something to make you more comfortable something to uh pardon me but with the exception of your friend Sawyer they all left you up here is it um are you are you okay with these people are they are they treating you all right <laughs> sorry I was just <laughs> they are they are fine. They haven't killed me yet. I don't well, think they have tried. So that that's a uh, uh, is they treating you all right? They haven't killed me. That's not really. I'm not psych- psychology guy, but it seems like there's a pretty broad range of. Well, I feel like if they do certain things, they might try to kill me, but I've managed to keep certain things close, and they haven't attempted to do murder me. So. Right, the relations are decent right now. It's a secrets. Everyone has secrets. Why? Would you like to hear one of ours? 
Yeah. Will you, will you tell me Greta with a secret? Will you tell me? <laughs> will you tell me one of your secrets if I tell you one of our secrets? Sure. Okay. Um. Uh, did you know that uh, whatever one of us experiences, all of us experience? Interesting. I love reading other people's mail. It multiplies that by 200. <laughs> I mean, it's it's knowledge-based, it's not physical, we can't, you know... Oh, so you, you just knowledge-based, if you share the physical yeah. feelings, not transmit? Uh, it can, but it has to be... Uh, wait a minute, a secret from you, please. I think this is just uh, going into depth on the first secret you just... Okay, but then you give so, me so a shallow yours. secret, and then you can ask me more <laughs> in-depth of my secret, and then I ask you more in-depth of your secret. Mm. 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 Let's see. Secrets. Mm. Well... This is a bit of an older secret, but when the funding ran out initially for the, the research, he's going to kind of gesture to the pile of books and papers that he, he slipped the thing onto. We were not uh, funded anymore, and we had to get creative with, with test subjects, so uh, Hans and I would put out advertisements and advertise our research facility as a free healthcare facility. So, research got done quickly, but I do not think I would do that again. Uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously you succeeded. Uh, your serums are renowned, especially here. I, I, I'm not the serum guy. He, I kicked him out, but um, you know, this big talk, even the American guy is impressed. So, um, yeah. A lot of work went into the serums. Do you ever wish that you hadn't left? Did Here's a free secret. Do you know that the father was going to come and get you? Then? You, the Americans, the, the, the Jack, Jack, whoever he is, Jack. The yay is such a hard Thing to pronounce, Chuck. Chuck. This one, he comes and gets you, <laughs> whisks you away, and the uh, the father was close, um, but he uh, he sent one of us to uh, to bring you back, and um, we lost him. Right before he... body of. Hmm. I think I know what happened. Now, he's hard. This is trouble. It was a uh, tampered face. It was sabotaged. That's what we suspected. Um, but uh, he is going to bring you here. We even had a room for you. <laughs> uh, but it was all by yourself. Interesting. It was, it's t been turned into one of our uh, places to read, but they're moving a bed back in right now. There's always a, a big, oh, we could have had a girl here. She is a doctor. We got a bunk house. Um, it, you know, so that's what we talked about that a couple of times. But, yeah. So that was the free secret. Please expand upon the first, the first thing. So you, you share mentally, you said the physically. Please expand upon that. I've been Not... researching bits of Dietrich when I can. Well, the, with the physical, um, only if uh, Zafaza allows it. And mm. with that, we're going to cut over to Dwight, who is sharing a bottle of whiskey with Bald Dietrich. As Bald Dietrich looks at Dwight and says, "So <laughs> you are you're happy with uh, the ways this is going, musician? Are you um?" 
Dwight is fucking now. He is probably he's shit faced. I'm gonna tell you a joke. Uh oh, here we go. Uh oh. You Germans, you fought well in the war. I'm not German. Oh, yeah, you're all German. Definitely German. Okay. Stereotypically racist, but fine. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm trying to give you a goddamn compliment, you bald German. Uh, is that the joke? Ah, ha, ha, no. What I mean. No, 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 no. Okay. Listen, just, just bear with me here. And sure. And Dwight throws back another one. He is fucking three sheets. American soldier, a British soldier, and a French soldier. They all decided, you know what? These goddamn Germans, they almost got the best of us. So they decided, eh, let's go to the library. Let's try to figure out how we can change the future. So they go into the library. The American soldier, he, he struts up to the the librarian. He says, howdy, ma'am. I need a book on how I can fight a foreign war. We, we, we don't understand, so I need to understand warfare better. She says, there you go, cowpoke. And she hands him the book on how to fight a better warfare. Well, the English guy, he, he strolls up. Hello, love. How can I better defend the English Channel? We've we've blown that. It's no longer our moat. He raised the book. There you go. He scutters off. Well, the Frenchman. He walks up and he's. <laughs> Hello. Can I please get me a book on how I can better defend my allies? in my foreign country without allies. So I can't do that, sir. Mona me or whatever they say. Yeah. He slams the fist. He says, why not? He says, because you'd lose it. But, ah, ah, ha. <laughs> that's, that's a French. They would lose everything. Oh, that yeah, fight? but I'm not. Doi goes, ah, they fight you over that, Dietrich. What? Ah, uh, it's a French. We have a French guy here. Hey. Who? What the, f what the, the French fuck guy. are you talking? We all got guys. I mean, listen, we have Let me ask you something, Bob yeah. Dietrich. Sure. Jack Kilgray. Yeah. When I first met him, I made a call. people that I knew. They could not remember him in this war. Which war? Oh, you know which war I'm talking about. Mm. Do I? You do. They couldn't remember him. Mm. Maybe he was uh, using a different name, yeah? What do you know about Jack Kilgrave, Dietrich? Yeah. I tell you what. You tell me what you think about uh, Kato Callahan, and I'll tell you about what I think about uh, Jack Kilgrave. Kato Callahan. Okay. Sure enough. Kato Callahan is a. Well, not. You know, I'll tell you what about Kato Callahan. I saw her in the news long before I met Kato Callahan, America's sweetheart. Do we have the clippings? Clippings of what? Of her? Uh, no. I don't, yeah, whatever. I watched her. I can produce some, but okay. 
Well, you can't. Really? Okay. I'm going to tell you about She's going to fly Callahan. around the goddamn world. She's, I mean. She, she is a strong person. However. Oh, however. Her decisions of late have confused me. Hmm. Well, you're a musician and a soldier. Perhaps you are tired of being uh, yelled at, ordered, and conducted. But you was, uh, uh, you told me, Kato Callahan, uh, Jack Kilgrave. Um, yeah, he is a special one, that one. What do you mean special? He's very old. Mm -hmm. Old as in what? Old as I'll tell you young. about any of these people because I don't give a shit. Ah, oh, and we have much to discuss. And as we cut away from there, back down into the galley, um, Kate, you're sitting there, probably finishing up, and there's just the sounds behind you of the uh, sauerkraut being stirred, and you hear... So, Kate, uh, what can we do to help one another? And Kate finishes and um, looks around for something to sort of wipe her face with. A handkerchief, a napkin comes flying over onto the galley. Thanks for dinner, Joe. She hands him the empty plate. When you hand the plate up, Dietrich Prime is standing there and he takes it. Ah, the pleasure is all mine, Kato Callahan. Now, what shall we talk about? And that is where we will end this session of Project Athena. Yay, Dietrich, what? Dietrich Prime, D Prime, the DP one. What? That doesn't, yep, we're gonna go with it. Um, as we go around to everybody in our exit strategy, we're gonna start with Lauren. Lauren, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm chill. Hey, what's up, everybody? I have nothing more to say. Uh, I'm Lauren. I'm the Salty Ginger. Uh, see you next week. I don't have anything to say. You may follow uh, Lauren at thatsaltyginger.com on Twitter. Uh, the link is in the chat as we drop down to Lindy. Lindy, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, Greg. This has been an amazing episode. <laughs> I'm loving every minute of this. I can't believe it's already nine o'clock. Cannot wait till next week. Um, and I was gonna say, I, I forgot to say this because we started sharing secrets, but Greta would have asked for a prism when he said, is there anything I can get you? Make you feel more comfortable. Uh, ah. So she'd be fiddling with that while we're talking. Um, but super awesome. Can't wait till next episode. I have plans. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. And you can find me in the meanwhile online at Laugh Love Lindy on Twitch and Twitter with my cat Tesla and I do all sorts of Dungeons and Dragons things and a little Call of Cthulhu, a little Firefly RPG, all sorts of crazy stuff and I'm addicted to tabletop games you should hang out, you should be here next week yes follow Lindy in chat, her link is there, uh, Lord Conti I saw you in there, it was either Dietrich or your thing and we are going with your thing when we have Strider in here because uh, that's where it's going to show up. Um, with that, let's drop over to Allison. Allison, Kate, how are you doing? Hey, uh, yeah. It is, um, it's really an interesting challenge to throw yourself into role playing somebody who is so. Uh, like traumatized. Um, 
So I'm kind of experimenting with barriers right now. I think I need better ones because I am feeling it tonight. Um, great stuff though, great stuff uh, from you, of course, Greg. And I just love getting to watch this cast at work. Chat, thanks for being so, uh, so into it with us. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Allison Robinson with two L's and a Y. Uh, pretty much everything else that I do, I talk about there. So just check me out if you're interested in following along on this crazy ride. We'll see y'all next week. Absolutely. And Allison's information's there. Please link up, follow her for life lessons, RP lessons, and just being able to say, hey, I follow a super nice person online and that makes me feel good when I crack my eyes in the morning. Uh, speaking about feel following somebody that makes you want to crack your eyes, Steven, how are you doing, buddy? And, crack them. Uh, crack them open. Right. <laughs> put some put some, put some, some visine in there and let's rock and roll. Uh, blast. Um, Dwight is ready to change some shit up. He was, he's, he no longer, you know, he's been through this. He's been through that. He's ready. He, we need to get to the details. We need to get to this, the scruff. Uh, and if it comes, it comes, he'll, he'll go with that. He's not worried about what people think. He's not worried about what they do. He's now in his own mindset, ready to, uh, basically, He's not gonna throw people under the bus, but he's ready to do what he thinks right. We'll go with that. And he wants information. He wants information. First of all, Jack Kilgrave. That has not left his mind for about three seasons. So if Ooh, he's so got somebody, yeah, if he's got, if he's got somebody in front of him that's gonna tell him something, that's what's gonna happen. And he, he'll whatever because he doesn't care because they're already in there. He'll tell them what he thinks about all of them. And he loves them all because he's had memories of loving them somewhere else. But he's right. ready. To, he's ready to find out. Well, it's a good thing because Dwight's got his new best buddy, Bald Dietrich, and Bald Dietrich likes to drink whiskey and talk secrets, as do all the other Dietrichs. There are a bunch of chatty Cathys in there, and so we're gonna see exactly what goes down at Castle Dietrich next week. And for everybody that just popped in, hey. Thanks for joining us. This is Paul Cthulhu, Project Athena. It is a long story that you may catch up with on YouTube. Uh, please do so. We would love to have you here each and every Sunday when we run from 7 to 9. This cast is fantastic. And if you think this cast is fantastic, it gets even fantasticer uh, next week when we get Strider Heat back sitting in uh, the Elijah Sawyer seat. Uh, our silver tongue devil will once again descend upon us, and I'm sure he's got plenty of things to say to Dietrich because he has plenty of things to say to everyone. As for me, my name is Grimjack21502 on these Twitches and those Twitters, and if you need to follow me, please do so. I will tell you everything that I'm getting into over there, and the one thing that I would like to pump up this week, uh, it's the same thing that we've been talking about before, Lindy and I, we have our Doors to Darkness finale on encounter roleplay from one to four on eastern on wednesday it is the end of a multi-month over a year storyline we are going to go out with an eldritch bang it should be awful and by awful i mean fantastic so please join us over there and watch us send many many characters into the cthulhu sunset as for all of us here in 1933 i say this and i will always say this 2018 it's it's not up there, everybody. It is not a medalist in the best years ever. 1933 isn't either, but we're all here. All of us that you see, we're in 1933. We're going to hang out here. We'll be waiting for you. We got Dwight Burke, Sabella Ives, Dr. Greta Von Krauss, Elijah Sawyer, and America's Flying Sweetheart, Cato Callahan, are in 1933. They wait for us. They wait for the players. They wait for chat. And they want you there to make sure that even for two hours a week, you can forget about the assholic nature of 2018. But until next week, when we join this group again and travel back to 1933, take it easy. Take care of yourselves. Give yourself a hug. Give another person you hug. Hug a person you love. Hug a person you hate. We'll see you in 1933.